Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to another video. Today we're going to be working on the boat. We're back in the garage working on the boat. I did promise we'd have several videos of doing some small upgrades and today uh, we've got an upgrade that I've wanted to do actually all year and that is installing a USB port like this. Uh, onto the boat, so when I want to charge my GoPro batteries and all that good stuff. Um, but today we're going to add some additional value to the video. So we're not just going to just straight up install the port. I'm actually going to go in a little bit more detail today about the tools and the right equipment to use. Um, so in some of my other upgrade videos that I've done, one of the things that a lot of people pointed out was like, hey, that's not the right wiring, or hey, it's not the right lugs, <clears throat> or it's not the right, you know, whatever. So one of the things that I always tell everyone is be sure to go in the description below in this video, go and check out the links to all of the items that I talk about. And I always make sure I link to the right things, marine grade materials and all that sort of thing. Sometimes I might cheat a little bit. Um, this obviously isn't a saltwater boat, so I'm not super hardcore about worrying about uh, corrosion, but some people want to make sure they absolutely do everything the right way. So um, I'm going to start doing that more and more in my videos, make sure I actually show the right stuff, but always in the description below, uh, you'll find in the description of any of my videos, I will link to the right materials. And oftentimes the pinned comment on any of my how-to videos will also say, make sure you do this, this, and use this and that, okay? So just bear that in mind. Um, and if you do enjoy this video, of course, and if you like these kind of videos, I'd really appreciate it. Just as a thank you, all you have to do to thank me is hit the thumbs like button, give the video a like, okay? And of course, make sure you're subscribed for more of these videos, hit the bell, all that good stuff and uh, we'll get started, okay? So let's get going. I'm gonna show you guys uh, exactly what tools I'm gonna have, what I'm gonna use, and uh, we'll go through the materials. And of course, don't forget, I have chapters in all my videos, so if you wanna skip the tool section, uh, you don't need this part, you wanna get right to the goods, just look on the video timeline. I always put chapters in there or in the description, okay? Let's get cracking. Now, very important, we discuss a couple of things right before I get into the tools, and that is how we wanna set this up electrically, okay? So, two things that we need to do. One, we need to make sure that this is on switched power, and two, we need to make sure we have it on a fuse, okay? So, switched power meaning that when the boat, uh, when something is switched turned on, so we have a switch that's on, that's what gives power to this. You do not wanna wire this directly to your battery because um, not only does this have lights in it, this has a little LED blue light to match kind of the blue of the boat um, that will slowly drain your battery if you're not careful. Uh, also, you guys may not realize this, but all of these charging ports, even the, the chargers for your phone or your camera, whatever that you have at home, even though your device isn't plugged in, just having that plugged into the wall actually draws, it trickles a small amount of power. That's why you always wanna make sure you unplug your chargers, don't leave them in the wall. Um, so same with this, it will always draw power. So we wanna make sure that this is on switch power so that when I'm not using the boat, I shut it off and I don't have to worry about it draining the battery. Mind you, you do need to remember to switch your, your stuff on and off. Um, we can't put it on keyed power because then it would only run when the key is on and the boat's running, which is not very good. So make sure you have this on a switch, ideally maybe a switch with a light in it. The other thing is too, you need to have a fuse, okay? So very important that this is on fused power, so you don't wanna run it straight to your switch. Uh, unless that switch is on a fuse. If it's not on a fuse, so if it's a switch and the switch that you've installed is bringing power to this, you wanna make sure that there's a fuse between the switch and this, okay? So super important that you have this fused. Now, I'm not gonna do a switch installation video because um, my boat, and I'm sure a lot of you guys out there have a boat with switches already on it, right? So on my particular boat, I actually already have a switch and a fuse already installed. It actually controls the navigation lights and the lights on my dashboard. So we don't need, uh, you know, we don't need any other switches. Everything is already there. So I have a three-way switch on my boat. So up controls nav lights and uh, the console lights and down position is just nav lights. So that's the one we're gonna use. So we're gonna patch into that. Okay, so very important. You're on switched power. Do not plug it right to the battery. And two, make sure you have a fuse, okay? So <clears throat> in my particular case, um, like let's say we were just running this, you would obviously need to have like a five amp fuse, okay? Because it draws 4.2, so you want like a five amp or a 10 amp is fine. Um, on here, I need to add up how many amps I'm gonna be using total. So I'm gonna be using, I need to calculate if I have my nav lights on, I also have my 
console lights on and I have both of this being used, I need to figure out what is my total amperage and then fuse it accordingly. Like right now, I think there's only maybe a five amp fuse on there. So potentially I could blow it if I had everything going at once. Okay, so super important, make sure you have the proper amperage on your uh, fuse. Okay, all right, let's get into the tools. Next up, we're gonna talk about crimpers. Now, crimpers are one of the things that I actually upgraded for these videos, guys, so you can check this out. Now, this is just a typical set of crimpers here that you can probably get at the store for like 15 bucks. There you go. I'm sure you guys have seen this before. They come in kits. Um, very inexpensive, very easy to use, so it's a wire stripper as well as a crimper. Now, the problem with these is that they really crimp like crap. So um, what I would do in my other videos, you'd see me, I'd crimp with these and I'd take some pliers and really muscle down on the crimp and make sure it was sealed properly. But I got tired of it. I wanted to use better crimpers. So I got myself a set of ratchet crimpers. So there you go. These are Titan crimpers. We'll have a link in the below uh, in the description. Now you can see these, the teeth, it's kind of hard to see, but you, well, you can probably see it, but there's actually two sets of dual teeth. So when you crimp, it's actually crimping in four pressure spots instead of these guys that just do one and you kind of got to move it around. Uh, if you want to get yourself a nice set of crimps like this, it is a lot easier to crimp down terminal connectors. Speaking of terminal connectors, there's my set of terminal connectors right here. So you want to make sure you have a set of these. Um, these are good for gauges from 10 right until 22 gauge. So you're going to want these because they are all used on all boats. So um, I like to use these. And speaking of which, of course, we gotta have our shrink wrap here. We got our little, our little heat shrinks. So these are super important. What I like to do is I like to crimp this on the wire and I like to protect the connector with one of these. And you can get them in kits of, uh, they got kits that come in all kinds of different colors, but I mean, I only end up using red and black. So I buy them in kits like this, or I buy them in huge lengths and I cut them all up and I put them in the kit. Okay, so I got those. And then we've got another hot topic, okay guys, and that's the wiring, okay? So I actually bought uh, some wiring here. This is, um, this is actually 12 gauge. So we're not gonna use the 12 gauge today. 12 gauge is what I'm gonna be using for another video where I run some new wiring uh, to the dash for some other accessories. So don't need that. Um, but over here, I've got some 14 gauge. So the 14 gauge uh, is, is very important and all of them have this, all these wires will have this same attribute, okay? And that is tinned copper, okay? So when you think of copper connectors, you're thinking of that coppery goldish color. Um, whereas tinned is actually silver color. So what they do is they put a coating of tin on top of the copper. And what that does is it actually um, creates a layer of anti-oxidization on your copper. So that's why you'll see tin copper lugs, you'll see connectors that are like that, as well as the wiring. So for marine, marine grade, you wanna use tin coated multi-strand wire, which is exactly what this is. And again, link in the description below to all that. Now, this is a little bit different. I wanted to try some wiring. So there's kind of two uh, main, there's like a new generation of wire now that, that's much more flexible. You can see how, how much more malleable this is. And that's because this is using a silicone sheath as opposed to PVC. So regular wire where you kind of bend it and it sort of keeps the, sh the shape, um, that's a PVC uh, insulator. Whereas this is silicone. So what's the difference? Um, well, silicone is obviously a lot more flexible it's a little bit softer, but it is more resistant to heat, weathering, aging, cracking, etc. cetera. Um, but it is more susceptible to damage from like something rubbing up against it or pinching it off, but this will be hidden under the dash. So I'm not too concerned about that. Uh, whereas PVC has a much harder sheath, but it is more susceptible to heat, aging, cracking, stuff like that. Um, it's just silicone is way more resistant to heat, uh, which I like. Um, it also attracts a bit more static. It, it attracts static. So it actually gets dirtier faster. It like attracts dust but it doesn't mean the wires compromise it anyway. So I wanted to try it out. So this is silicone uh, insulated tinned copper, but like I said, you can also get uh, PVC and marine, you can find marine grade in both types. Um, I actually found some very high end, uh, high amperage boat wiring for like, I guess it's for like big, big vessels that it was like 650 amp, good to up to like a thousand degrees or something. It was just crazy. Um, and that was silicone based insulators. So that's it. Make sure you're using tinned copper for all of your installation, okay? You guys have told me over and over again in my videos, so now I am officially using it for all of my installs going forward, okay? 
All right, let's get on to the next part. All right, we're gonna need a drill and you're gonna need a uh, multi-sized drill bit like this guy here, super practical for, uh, for drilling holes of variable sizes. I, I use these kind of all the time, they're super useful. And after that, we've also got some, just some pliers. I got my pliers, wire cutters, and a couple of screwdrivers that we're gonna need. So that's it. So hopefully everything here, oh wait, one more thing. How am I supposed to apply heat wrap if I don't have any heat gun action? So we got the heat gun as well. That should be everything. Okay, let's get going. Okay guys, here's the panel that I was talking about. So you can see it's pretty simple. I've got all of my switches here that control the various functions on my little tin boat. And right here is the fuse. So each fuse for each switch, which is cool because I don't have to disconnect any of these switches from the power source. I could just go ahead and pull the fuse and that'll disconnect any power from the switch. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this panel off. I've actually never taken this panel off. Now I do have access from underneath, but it might be easier to just pull the panel out a little bit and see what's there. So I'm gonna disconnect, take this fuse out and uh, we're gonna take this panel off and see what we got under here, all right? Let's do it. Okay, so you can see we've got this out, but I have very little room to work. It barely comes out at all. Um, but we do need to establish which switches here on the bottom are positive and which ones are negative. So we're gonna just grab a tester real quick and we'll test it out and make sure we're playing with the right wires. Okay guys, I am crawling underneath the dash of the boat under the console and uh, so there's an old radio that's under here and it's kind of in the way of the switches which are up in here. So I'm actually gonna cut this out right now before we go any further. Let's get rid of this stupid radio. Okay guys, I was able to get the radio out of there and it gave me more space to see what I was looking at and then I was able to get more, uh, more of this out of the console. So this is what we're checking out here. So here's the switch. Okay, so this is the switch. So this is the wiring for the switch. And this is the fuse, which is this right here. This is the fuse. So this red wire is what's coming in from the power of the boat. It's coming here. This is the other side of the fuse. And you can see it actually goes to the center switches here with this light gray. And here you can see black, 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 black. So these are all the grounds. So this side of the switch, the right-hand sides of the switches are what is grounded and you can see the gray 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 and then the different color codes so the sorry so you can see the color codes here you can see there it's different colors as well but this is black and over here this is different colors as well it's a little confusing but basically on the switches the right hand side over here is is ground and the left hand side is power so it's not that hard to figure out so because we want to patch into the bottom part of the switch, not the top, because the top again lights up our nav lights. No, sorry, not the nav lights, sorry, the console lights. We only want to do it so when the bottom lights are on, and you can see that when the bottom lights are on, nothing happens. So that means we're going to patch into this positive, and we're going to patch into this ground. Um, now, they've conveniently actually got a ground wire right here. Um, this used to be connected to the stereo. So what I can do is I can actually patch into this ground wire that's here, but this I cannot use. This is a live, uh, this is a live wire. This is not switched, so this is no good. Uh, and you can tell because it's, it's connected. Uh, it's hard to see, there you go. It's actually connected to the same red that powers the fuse, so that's useless. Um, so we're gonna patch into uh, this guy here. We're gonna patch into this guy here by redoing the crimp and that'll give us our power and then we'll just clip our ground onto here for the USB. And for me the dilemma was do I put it here or do I put it here? I think I'm going to put it up here with the rest of the console stuff. One, because I think it'll look better, but two, um, if I put it here and something's plugged in and I'm driving, I don't want my knuckles to hit the wire sticking out. Uh, I think it just might be in the way, so I think we're going to put it here. So let's go ahead and pop this off. Um, and get the, uh, uncrimp this thing here, get the wires out. So if I just take this off here, which is the switch power, and I put this onto positive here, and I touch the ground to here, we should see these lights go on. There you go. So see, when the switch is on, okay, so, Let's uh, put it all together properly 
and get her going. So now the question becomes, how do you get this off of here? So what I'll do is I will cut off the actual crimp right here. And that'll give me access to the wires. And there you go, just like that. Let's go ahead and get a piece of wire and uh, connect it onto here and then we'll get it onto the crimp. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and get our kit out here and I'm actually gonna go with the yellow. So the yellow crimp, uh, the yellow connector like this guy here, um, this is rated for, where is he, 12 to 10. So because we're gonna have so many wires going in here, we're now gonna have three wires going in here, that's why I'm gonna go with a higher uh, rated connector. This is the biggest one we have, okay? So let's go with this guy. All right, so we're gonna get us a length of wire that's long enough here. We're gonna go with, oh, I'd say that's probably more than ample. Uh, by the way, you know, there's those other wire strippers we have, but I actually really dig these ones here. So I'll just pop that in here like so. There you go, just like that. All right, I think I'd like these a little bit longer just to make me more comfortable. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna make these uh, stick out a little bit more. Okay, let's see how this does now. We do want wires popping out of here, that's for sure. Pop, wires popping out, not your friends. All right, that looks pretty good. All right, we got that on there. Let's get our ratchet crimpers out. There we go. There we go, there's one. And I, always, I like to do both sides, just in case. And there we go. And then we just test our connector. Make sure no wires are coming out of there. Okay, that looks good. So now we're just gonna go ahead and put a uh, little piece of shrink wrap on here and uh, make sure that's nice and secure because you don't want these wires coming out, that's for sure. All right, got my little piece here just to cover this up. There we go. All right, guys, that's all there is to it for that. And she is ready to go. Now we can go ahead and uh, we can go ahead and add a connector onto this guy and we're good to go. All right, so as I mentioned before, this is 14 gauge, so we're gonna be using a 14 gauge connector. Um, and I'm also gonna put a little bit of this guy on there. I just, I like using these. I find it helps protect the end from bending or snapping out. It just adds a little bit of layer of protection. So we'll go ahead and put that on the wire first. Then I'm going to go ahead and expose some wire and we're gonna go ahead and crimp this on. Let's go ahead and strip the wire. We're gonna go ahead and put our heat shrink on. And uh, here's, I'm gonna show you why these ratchet crimpers are so great, is that you can actually take the crimp, uh, the connector, put it inside the crimpers, ratchet down on it, and it locks it in place, you see? I can lock it in place, and then I can go ahead and just put that in there, and then crimp it down, flip it over, give it another, there you go. And that is on. Give it a couple of tests, make sure it's good. Get our shrink wrap up here. All right, let's go ahead and... And there you go, guys. Crimped and ready to rock. So now before we go any further, let's do another test and make sure we are good to go. So let me just go ahead and put the fuse back in. Connect the power back. And let's get our ground wire and turn it on. There you go. Just good to go. All right, let's go ahead and put it all together now. Okay, guys, here comes the scary part, and that's drilling holes in the console. Now, drilling holes in a console, it's, uh, yeah, it's a little spooky. So you're going to measure 50,000 times and make sure you are right on the money. So I'm going to get in here. And I'm just gonna draw a circle and make sure this is where I want it because if it's not centered and it's not looking good, it's gonna drive me nuts. So we're gonna just draw a circle around here. All right, so here's my circle, guys. So well, you may not be able to see it on camera, but I'm gonna take a look. Oh, yeah, it looks pretty good. 
I'm going to go ahead and get my center and make it a little higher than center. So right about there. And if you feel like it's off a little bit, don't be shy. You can erase and recenter yourself. I've drawn my center, I'm backing up, I'm looking how it is in reference to this guy here. If you want to be exact and you want to measure it, you can, you know, do whatever you got to do so that you're comfortable before you start drilling into your console. Because once you've drilled into here, your party's over, you've permanently made a mark. So, what I'm going to do is here is I'm going to start off with a small drill bit and I'm going to go ahead and drill a pilot hole and then I'm going to go ahead and use the big one and we're going to make the hole. This is scary because I've never drilled into the console. By the way, one final note before we drill and when you do drill into your console, make sure you have rear access to everything you want and make sure that there's space back here. The last thing you want to do is drill in because you thought it was all right and then you realize there's something right up against because don't forget, this has got some depth to it, right? So it needs to be able to go all the way back there. So this, you know, this has got two inches of depth. So you gotta make sure you have at least two inches. Um, and in this case, I do, I absolutely do. So let's get to it. Well, for better or for worse, that's the hole. All right, let's get this out of here. and Let's get the big one out. So now these drill bits actually have measurements on them right along the side here. Um, and I kind of, measured it this way. It doesn't actually say on the package how big this is, but it looks to be about an inch and one eighth. So I'm gonna to go to the inch and one eighth uh, depth, which is the uh, third last band here, and we'll, uh, we'll double check. All right, here we go. You possibly may be witnessing me completely destroy my boat. All right, here we go. Look at that fun stuff. All right, getting there. We're pretty centered. We're a little bit close to this side, but. There you go, guys. That looks really good. There, boom. All right, let me just get this out of here. We're gonna clean all this up. Let's clean the uh, pencil mark off and then we'll uh, install this. So one other thing we need to do guys before uh, we go ahead and do the final install is I need to actually change this clip. You can see it's a male clip. So we're gonna cut this off and put a female clip on here and then we're good to go. Same exercise as before. We're just gonna go ahead and cut this off. Shoot, he scores! And we'll go ahead and feed this one through as well. And we are almost there, guys. Okay, so in this installation, the USB uh, port comes with an, a faceplate like this, um, which I could, I suppose, install it this way, um, but I don't think it's 100% necessary. There's nothing in here that locks the plate in place. Like, it doesn't stop it from spinning around. So I don't think it's super critical. Um, so I'm not, gonna I'm not gonna install it, but I am obviously gonna install the rubber gasket. Uh, with the cover as well as the uh, you got to put the backing on so this goes on first okay so you need to make sure you go ahead and put that on so this goes on in behind okay so you need to actually put this through here like this first so you got that on there then you go ahead and put this through all right then this guy goes on like so so remember the gasket opens up like that. So you're gonna go through here like so. And then we can go ahead and make our connections. So we got our negative there and we've got our positive right here. And it's obviously it's all written on here. And there you can see it's actually already on. And then we can just go ahead and pop this on here like so. And there you go. Oop, wait a minute, that goes like that. There you go. Very cool. Okay, so let's uh, go ahead and get the backing screwed in and uh, put all this back in place. But before I do that, there is a live wire here that I'm not too fond of. So I'm gonna just cover up this live connector. I'm gonna go ahead and just put a piece of, uh, uh, piece of uh, heat sink on here just to protect this so nothing comes into contact with that by accident. Okay, so let's go ahead and screw on the backing here. 
see how well I can get at it from over here. Now you do need to get this on there pretty tight so it doesn't move. So just make sure your rubber, your little rubber gasket slash cover is in a good spot. Make sure it's all straight. Go ahead and tighten her down. There we go. There. Oh yeah, that ain't going anywhere. Nice. Now, this may move with vibration over time. Keep an eye on it. If you see that this little this little trim piece on the back that's only small plastic moves. Uh, you might want to glue it on there. You can put some Loctite. That might help as well um, if you have any. And that's it. There we go. All right, let's close her all up and uh, we'll get the final look. And that, as they say, is all she wrote. So, here we go, we got USB power. So let's test it out. All right, let's give it a shot. I got my uh, Osmo action cam here, so we'll go ahead and plug that in. And there you go, it's charging. You can see the lights on. And let's go to the back of the boat. So back of the boat, you can see plugged into the nav lights here. I have got my Yolo Tech power stick and we got a green light, so that means this is live. All right, there you have it, guys. That's all there is to it. We've got our USB port in now, good to go. So a couple things we wanna talk about, just, just to wrap things up. Uh, you saw this was a pretty easy install. In fact, if I wasn't recording this, it'd probably take me like, I don't know, 30 minutes to do it. Um, so it's important not to be intimidated. Don't be intimidated by working on the electricals of your boat. It's really not that complicated. You just have to take your time, follow the wires, get yourself a 12 volt tester with a little light on it where you just touch one thing to the ground and you can probe and see which ones are your positives. Um, if you're, you know, if you're paranoid about getting electrocuted, you don't like playing with electricity, disconnect the main cable from the battery. That way you cut off all your power or do like I did you take the fuses out really not that big of a deal guys just take your time do not be intimidated by working on your electricals it's very easy to do as you saw the other thing you want to make sure is of course make sure you've got the right tools so i showed you guys the crimper you saw the wire strippers i used and again i'll link to all the materials all the tools that i used uh, you can find that in the description below so important to have the right tools obviously and then the final part is make sure you're aware of how much power you're consuming so the question becomes if i plug in something into this charger and i've got my camera running over there and i've got other things that are operating on the battery how long is my battery gonna last? Like, am I gonna run out of power if I try and charge my GoPro all day on this, or am I okay? Well, that's a great question if you're wondering that, and you can go and check out the video on batteries and how MCAs and CCAs and amp hours and all that good stuff, I did a video all about how to figure that out and how to calculate how long things will last on your boat. So again, link in the description below to my battery video, so go check that out, and you will no longer ask that question. You're gonna know exactly how long your battery's gonna last. So guys, that's it. That's all we got for today. Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you found this super helpful. And remember, uh, if you enjoyed the video, you want to do more like this, please go ahead and hit the like button. That really helps me grow the channel, helps build us up in the YouTube algorithm. And uh, of course, make sure you're subscribed. I'm actually going to be taking off for a couple of weeks. I've got some personal stuff that I got to take care of. I'm actually getting uh, hernia surgery. So I'm going to be out of it for a couple of weeks and then I'll be back to making videos. So subscribe, make sure you hit the notification bell. And that way, the next time I have a video, you'll know, and it will be more electrical stuff on the boat. So be sure to keep an eye out for that. And of course, if you have any questions, comments, things you like, things you don't like, techniques that you enjoy when you're doing your uh, electrical work on the boat, just uh, go ahead and make a comment down below and I will read it. Guys, I read all of my comments and I try and reply to everyone. So don't be shy, uh, hit me up and uh, I'll get back to you, give you a thumbs up, say a thanks or answer any questions that you have, okay? So that's it guys, thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you next time. Peace.